Howdy, it's Tubal Keen again, and I've had several requests to make a thread protector for the lathe. And let me explain a little bit about what this is, and this will be a several part video. A thread protector is used on any threaded spindle lathe to protect the thread, and it has another purpose too, and that's to help you remove the uh, collet adapter like this safely and without damaging it. And we have several different ones here. This is uh, from an Atlas Craftsman one and a half eight thread. Note that it has a counter bore. This is from a Logan. Just a little bit different design but they would actually interchange and could be used on either lathe. Again one and a half eight. And this is uh, from a South Bend uh, 10 with the larger spindle on that is a two and a quarter eight thread I believe, but I'm going to set that aside and not use that, but let's step over to the Atlas real quickly and see again its purpose. Here I am at the 12 inch Craftsman Atlas lathe. Now if you damage the thread here, although this is hardened, and that's the end of the spindle, you have to throw the lathe away. Now how can you damage it? You could run your tool or some other tooling against that and, uh, and just tear it up or significantly damage it. Well, how can you do that with a chuck on there? Well, you're not going to if you've got a regular three or four jaw, but you may have other attachments in the spindle like this. And I know we're working away from it, but, you know, anything can happen. You need to protect that. And uh, that is the purpose of the thread protector. It goes on there like that. And then it has a dual purpose. If you're using your collet attachment, and this is your spindle adapter, and you tap that in there real hard and it gets drawn in even tighter as you as you tighten your collet it is difficult to get out of there this threaded uh, protector always comes with uh, with this but you may not have one with the aid of a spanner wrench you back this out and that allows you to release this from the, uh, the number two taper in there so uh, or is that a number three I forgot and yes, you can remove this from the spindle with a ramrod, but if you do not have the rec correct type of ramrod, and you're just using a piece of half-inch stock or something, it's liable to slip inside of this and damage the key. And then you've got a repair job or you've got to get a new one of these. Notice that this was specifically made for this type of application here where you're not going to damage it. So make yourself a ramrod like that and uh, that works real nice also but we're going to make a thread protector so let's step, o step over to the bench although the original is made of steel of course you can make it of different materials as well and here's a piece of Delrin and I was originally going to make it out of the Delrin to protect the thread but not necessarily strong enough to knock that adapter out but uh, this machine so nicely because we do have to do internal threading a little bit larger than what I need so I'm not going to use that I also got uh, steel here and this is 12 L 14 and that it could be a little bit larger in diameter than this and that would work fine but to expedite matters here and make the project go a little faster for the purposes of this video I'm going to make it out of aluminum and I had this nice slug of aluminum with a hole in there it would save me the, some drilling and speed things up but way too large in diameter so I'll set that aside and I happen to have this piece of aluminum and that is just a little bit larger so I won't even turn that down other than maybe to clean it up so it's a matter of uh, boring threading uh, putting that uh, counter bore in there and uh, cutting it off putting the taper on and so on and watch the order of operations I get a lot of comments about what should I do first and uh, so follow me through on that order of operation however that can vary a little bit but you do want to do it somewhat in the order that I'm going to show you I do not work from a drawing again but you'll see me put some key dimensions on either write them on the project or on a little card or sometimes I write my dimensions right on the lathe with a magic marker uh, temporarily so that I don't uh, spoil the work and notice this this piece is long enough so I can 
make three of them in case I goof it up. When I make a project such as this, I realize that hardly anyone will actually make one of these, but you might find it interesting to see all of the different machining steps that I go through, and a lot of people enjoy that. But let's look at a few of the dimensions on this, and I, I had a laugh here that, you know, this is a thread protector, and look at all the damage to the thread protector, and that appears to be grinding, like they hit the, hit that with the grinding wheel on a tool post grinder. This is used, of course. So the dimensions here, the diameter, and that could be any diameter, it really doesn't matter at all, and that comes to 2 and 5 sixteenths approximately, and you need uh, some diameter in order to drill a hole so that you can use your uh, spanner. The pin on the spanner is a factor. All right, that's the uh, the OD, and then the the thickness, and again that could vary a little bit, but it's approximately at nine hundred thousandths. This diameter here is uh, it's a little bit over an uh, inch and a half. It's in fact, uh, let's see, one point five uh, twenty two. On an actual chuck, you want that to be exact, so some of the support is achieved right there. But this isn't a chuck and there's no weight on it, so that again isn't too terribly critical. And uh, the angle here, and that could be anything, and you don't even need the angle for that matter, is, I know I got it backwards here, uh, where is it here? 55 degrees and finally the thread you know that's an inch and a half thread on the spindle inch and a half is not coarse it is not fine it is a uh, well I'll, I'll tell you in a second in the in the book here what that is and what the tap drill size needs to be for that or the, the diameter here before I do the internal threading which I'm going to call the tap drill size Imagine a tap that big. I know this is way too much information, but Unified National Coarse in the inch and a half would be six threads. Unified National Fine in inch and a half would be twelve threads. Well, we're talking here about eight threads, and that is uh, shown here under, and I believe it's the same, unless this was specially uh, designed by the, uh, the lathe industry, under uh, eight thread series. And there's all this information here about eight thread series and all the different diameters. But rather than going through all of that and deciphering it, and again, it's way too much information, I've gone to this page, which is on uh, tap drill sizes. And again, look at all this information. But the very bottom row here involves inch and a half eight. And I was able to find the tap drill size there. And coupling that with just measuring this I've come up with uh, the dimension to be that I want to bore it at uh, 1.360 or thereabouts. Is that clear as mud? Finally ready to make some chips and again this stock is 2 and 3 eighths diameter and I'm going to face it off now. I'm not going to worry about the OD later on I'll clean that up. Let's see what we got here. That's going to get faced later on again, so I could care less about the finish, but at least that squares it off. I'm going to cut this off the length right away before I drill it, but you certainly could do it the other way. And I've already measured the uh, 
thickness of this and just set my cutoff tool at that depth and allowed a little extra for facing. Now I very, matter of fact I've never used this uh, spring type cutter and it's a rather wide tool. Normally I use these but normally I do not cut off anything quite this large in diameter and these are real thin tools that are I don't think are up to the job so I'm going to try this with a little Aluma cut and, uh, and see I might have to experiment just a little bit with uh, feed and uh, uh, speed and all of that then uh, I don't intend to cut it all the way off when I get down to quarter inch or half inch I'll hand hacksaw it off so let's see how this works and there's quite a tendency for this to slip in the rocker a lot of downward pressure That was quite successful and I've showed a lot more of it than what I intended to and I'm just about to the point here where the tool holder is touching the work and uh, did you also notice that I was varying and increasing I should say the spindle speed as I got deeper because in effect uh, the cutting speed was being reduced as I got to a smaller diameter again way too much information I have about three eighths of an inch left there I'm just gonna whack it off real quick with a hand hacksaw and without the machine on and I guess I'm starting to love this spring tool holder did you notice me uh, touching it at one point and you know and, and it is vibrating and taking up that uh, uh, vibration and you know eliminating it I should say <clears throat> all right I'll saw it off now why did you saw it off you ask because I didn't want to have to extend any more of the tool out of the holder and uh, then I didn't want this to fly as it came off because it's kind of a heavy chunk so now I will put it in the uh, chuck this way, face it, and start the drilling and boring. I gotta say I'm loving this gator chuck and you saw me present that uh, and it was a gift from that company in one of my other videos. Let's take a look at this real quickly now. This is an Armstrong spring type cutoff tool. And I don't know the number on it because someone at some point ground it here and to reduce the thickness, I suppose, so it fit into a, a tool holder. But And you can see I had none too much of the tool left. And that's why, part of the reason why I, want, I didn't want to extend it anymore. And then I sawed off the, uh, uh, the, the work rather than completing it with that. But I thought I would never use this, but there it goes and I love it. Now I'll face this uh, side that's been cut off and I believe I'll do that off camera although some people are getting mad when I do things off camera but I'm using this uh, double-ended uh, tool carbide. I really like that also. That came from Shars. I have faced this side and that's a starter drill there rather than a center drill. Then I will drill a quarter inch all the way through, half inch all the way through, then I'll have to switch to taper shank bits.
now a three quarter inch bit then a one and a sixteenth and then I will bore from then from there on out <coughs> Now I'm ready to bore, and I got my heavy duty Alors boring bar here. And remember, the final diameter, internal diameter, is 1.360, but I'm going to take it to uh, 1.260 on this clausing lathe, and then take the final hundred thousandths off on the Atlas lathe where I will do the threading and uh, all of the finish work, and that will become apparent to you as we move along of why I am moving to the other lathe. But one of the reasons I wanted to do the initial work on the closing lathe here is because this has the horsepower to hog the metal off, and if I wasn't talking about this and shooting a video, this wouldn't have taken very long at all. But uh, I don't have much luck with the Atlas lathe, you know, running a a one inch bit or an inch and a quarter bit and and I, there's another reason too that will become apparent and right now I'm at 1.170 so that'll take about two passes to take this off set my cross slide for for zero and I'm gonna take uh, uh, 40 thousandths off on this pass. Direct reading dial. This one inch diameter Alorus bar is a CBB2. It's massively thick and doesn't vibrate and I, I like it for big holes but uh, aluminum isn't much of a strain on that. And this is the last pass on the closing lathe. To the other lathe. I've moved the work over to the Atlas lathe and I had a parallel in here to hold it uh, parallel or square in this little chuck because I have to leave some room here where my finger is so that I can uh, complete the thread with the boring bar and be able to see the end of it and avoid striking the chuck with the tool. Now the real reason that I'm on this lathe now, although there are others as well, is that at some point I want to be able to take the work out and test fit it to see if it goes on the thread. And you never want to take your work out of a chuck until you're done. So this chuck is small enough so I can loosen it up and then in turn see if it fits the spindle thread. So that's the whole game plan here. It may seem silly or to you or Maybe it's silly to me. All right, remember that's the final diameter, internal diameter, that I want to cut. And uh, why didn't I take it to that diameter on the closing lathe? Because I knew that when I switched it uh, from one chuck to another, I would lack concentricity. This will bring it back into being concentric uh, for when I do the threading. 
and it's just more accurate this way and this is an APT boring bar about 5 eighths in diameter so let's take a trial cut and a measurement and I'll go from there and I have the carriage stop set such that I won't crash the boring bar into the chuck. This lathe actually runs quieter than the closing. I'm watching the carriage stop. Now I can take Make sure you got your glasses on. I got mine on. One two eighty, and I'll probably use this as I get closer. Also, say thank you for watching my videos, making my channel a success. Appreciate that, and uh, give me a thumbs up if I deserve it. Uh, leave a comment. Well, that completes part one of this two-part video. Be sure and watch me in part two as I put the internal thread into this little thread protector and the taper and a few other little finishing uh, operations. So join me then and thank you for watching.